uh, for introducing me. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's I know my name is quite hard to say. So my name is Paweł Borówka, uh, which is uh, uh, Paul Blueberry, if you prefer. So you can call me Blueberry. Uh, yeah, because in uh, in Poland we have this kind of uh, funny names and surnames somehow. So yes, uh, okay. So uh, the idea is to talk about. Uh, the print varieties and the lecture by uh, Angela Ortega. And I, uh, yes, I prepared some, some notes. I'm happy to answer or any questions you, uh, that you, know, you found during the talk and the, the lecture. And today and then tomorrow, I think, and on Friday, I, I will, will have like one more hour. So please feel free. I think the, you know, answering the questions is the most important part of, of, of the exercises somehow. And uh, at least for me, it, it's usually that only like after like half an hour after the lecture, I start wondering about the, the, the details and I find some interesting questions. So uh, that's why, you know, you have, you have time to do it. So uh, for sure, uh, if you have questions, uh, this is like a priority for me to try to to answer uh, the question what Angela had in mind. Uh, yeah, okay. So uh, starting from the, the beginning, I just prepared the, the references because, you know, uh, the, the first lecture was like very, very technical. So uh, the references is the like the, the, the the biggest or the best book in the in the theory of complex abelian varieties, namely complex abelian varieties by Binger Hakalange, BL. Uh, there is a lot of things inside. So yeah, so most of the first talk was uh, can be found here, and those are chapters like I think chapters one to four. One three. And plus then the chapter, I think, 11 about the Jacobians. Uh, yeah, OK. Uh, with, uh, so yeah, so if you find yourself, uh, yeah, I want to say one thing uh, that when I was a student, I was told that the theory of abelian varieties is this kind of uh, strange theory that uh, you want to do some geometry. And uh, it's really useful to start reading uh, this book uh, starting from the chapter four and forget about, you know, don't read those technical details in uh, before and only if you really need them, go back and read them. Obviously, it's not it's not easy when you uh, want to, to have a lecture. So that's why those first lectures on abelian varieties and prims are usually so technical. Yes, and there are lots of questions and especially uh, you know, you should you shouldn't be the people who are, who don't know much about abelian varieties shouldn't be uh, ashamed. It's usually like that that you start and either you know everything and it's like boring technical stuff, or you don't know anything and then it's like crazy magic in some sense. So uh, that's the thing. Uh, we've prepared some uh, exercises so you can find them on the uh, Trieste. Uh, on the Trieste web page, I think I should maybe I should be able to actually put them also in the chat, or somebody else maybe can find them and put them. Uh, download. I wonder if I can. How it? How does it work? chat file so i will try to uh, maybe send it uh... okay yeah so there are exercises uh the bad thing about exercises is that uh, they usually we we assume that you know what a prim variety is in most of them uh, so uh, you need to wait for the second lecture of angela uh, to see the uh, uh, to uh, to understand the questions sometimes but i i'm pretty much sure that uh, you know 
uh, that there are many of, of you who already know what the, uh, what the print variety is. So uh, I really would like you to, to go with the exercises. Uh, in a second, I will just uh, try to uh, say a few words about the exercises and, uh, and what's uh, going on there. Obviously, because this is not a lecture, I hope this is not a lecture, but the, the exercises or the tutors or however you call it, the seminar, I'm really, I would be really grateful if you, you know, start talking because communication is, I think, the, the crucial one in the, in the, in the studies. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to stop me and to, to start talking. Uh, Yes. Uh, okay, so maybe I will say uh, uh, just for those who, who do not know much about abelian, uh, abelian varieties, like once more what's going on there. So, okay, so uh, in terms of, you know, what's interesting about or what, what's interesting about abelian varieties and the line bundles on them, yes, uh, the ample line bundles. That it's really uh, that uh, that is really the, the you know the theorem that says that uh, if L is ample and L prime is a line bundle, bundle. Sorry for my writing, actually. Yeah, I usually try to write too fast. So uh, C1, the, the, this uh, C1 of L is C1 of L prime, uh, one, and the second, if and only if, uh, L prime is the translation by some point of L, okay? So it's really, uh, it's really, you know, uh, when Angela was talking about uh, polarization, yes, in principle, she defined it as a line bundle. Uh, I prefer to call it polarizing line bundle because polarization is the churn class of a line bundle. But, you know, but the, the information is more or less the same. Yes, you have a line bundle and, uh, and then you can just translate it. And this is the only thing you can do. So uh, in the in the course there was this question about this uh, uh, this uh, short equal, uh, short exact sequence yes big zero uh, of x uh, x and then the neuron severi class of x yes and there was a question about if uh, if it splits somehow yes because there was uh, we wanted to, to talk about uh, peak zero to see that it is also an abelian variety, the dual one. So actually, yeah, it somehow splits. So it, it's not only that uh, we we have this uh, this uh, statement that the, that you, that the line bundle is defined up to translation, the the the, the class. So uh, if you make a little bo bit more technical. Uh, fixing statements and then you can uh, you can find the so-called characteristics and then you can uh, somehow uh, distinguish the line bundle with characteristic zero so this x this x uh, somehow if you have l and x you can call this x this x is a characteristic of a line bundle Akara. And for principal polarization, this characteristic is uh, uniquely defined, so everything is nice. Uh, if uh, L is not principally polarized, that you have to be careful because this is this the kernel of the polarization. So this kernel of the polarizing isogeny, if I want to say so, because you know you have these five things, and you have to live with with a thing that you know. When I say polarization, I may I may think of any of those five. So uh, there is this kernel of polarization. So there are points X such that those guys are actually isomorphic to each other. Yes. So the characteristic is then defined up to uh, up to this kernel. And uh, obviously, again, hopefully we'll not uh, go into details. But uh, if you have a line bundle, 
uh, you can uh, ample line bundle, you are interested in this space of sections and they are defined by so-called theta functions. And if you have seen theta functions, it's good. If you don't see, it's also good because you don't want to see them. It's like a series of uh, exponents. Uh, so there is lots of uh, things which is uh, in some sense hard because you are really in the analytic uh, in the analytic world, yes. And for example, finding the zeros of a series of exponents is far from being easy. So that's why we really want to go into the algebraic point of view. And uh, that's why the Jacobians are really important, yes, because uh, because for the Jacobians, we have this Abel Jacobi map and you can, we can think about this tori as an algebraic object and as a, you know, the divisors of degree zero. So, okay, so here, yeah, so here you can think about uh, characteristic zero line bundle up. Bali, uh, yes, may I ask a stupid question? But, obviously. Sorry, but, but I'm not sure I understand really. What do you mean by the C1 of L is equal to C1 of L prime? So that they are linearly equivalent numerically. No, 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 no. Those are chain classes. So this is in the neuron severi class. Yes. So you can think about those guys as a, this Hermitian form uh, uh, defined by the by the line bundle. Okay. So this is in the neuron severi class. Yes. Neuron so you Severi. really mean equality. Yes, I really mean equality. Yes. Okay. Yes. So in some sense, okay. If if you if you are here x. Yes, if you are here and you, you go with the churn classes and then you have equality here. And obviously, again, if you think about churn classes, uh, you can think of different things, but on abelian varieties, churn classes can be seen as just the Hermitian form, positive definite integral on, uh, on the lattice, yes? So you have equality here and then you are wondering what's going on uh, in, the, in the line bundles here, yes? And the thing is that it's really, the same line bundle up to translation and it works for uh, uh, for ample line bundles so this is theorem actually i can check the the statement this is obviously in the birkan hacker lange book yes uh, chapter four i don't know by you know not not from my head but i i know i can find it within like 15 seconds so Okay, so uh, sorry, another question. Sorry. Yes. In, and if you look at the first chain class as the divisor, the divisor to which which L is associated with. Mm -hmm. So what you get, you get exactly the, the same linear system on the abelian variety. So okay, wait a second. So if you if you have a line bundle and you you want to think about line bundle as a divisor, yes, mm -hmm. then you can move divisor. Uh, by a translation on a curve, yeah, on a on an abelian surface, and in general, those two uh, things. So the divisor and it's okay. So may, wait a second. I in general, they are not linear. In general, they are not linear equivalent. Yes. yes. So in general, they are not linear equivalent. They are linearly equivalent if and only if the 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 translation is in the kernel of this polarizing isogeny. Yes. So mm -hmm. they are they are only algebraically equivalent. Yes. yes. So exactly, this is this is so. So in general, there are they are in this. It gives you the same class in the neuron severi, yes. And uh, and sometimes, depending on the abelian variety, you have a linear equivalence. Okay. Okay. So in terms of divisors, the, the second condition uh, is uh, is the same for, for for the associated divisors, right? Okay. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So uh, okay. So maybe. Uh, okay, so this is this is so this is what I want to say somehow about the uh, about the the line bundles on abelian varieties, and obviously now we have the Jacobians, yes, the, the J J JC. So the JC is uh, you can think about the. Wait, could could you repeat yes. please the last argument because I didn't get uh, this part was uh, X. So does this the second part of the theorem hold for any x or just this chosen x no right for every x in x okay thanks because if you move by uh, by a point on an abelian variety you get every you, you get something which is uh, algebraically equivalent so this yeah for all x's 
if no, okay, so there exists X, yes. In, in this statement, L prime is isomorphic to Tx for some X, yes. Then they are in the uh, or some X in X. Yes, so if you move the, by some X, then you get the same uh, churn class, the same Hermitian form in some sense. Yes. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. So maybe now uh, we can see. I will. I will go into uh, the the exercises, and I will try to persuade you that the exercises are interesting, fun, and you know, however you uh, you want the exercises to be. And they are. All, all, I already. I, I want to say stress it. it they are on of uh, different levels of uh, uh, you know there are there they are there are some easy exercises and some uh, harder ones and actually there is a question which I, I don't how I don't know how to answer so maybe uh, uh, maybe you can actually help me to solve some problems okay so exercises so the first exercise is uh, is uh, for people who who don't know much about abelian varieties is just to uh, to show you that uh, you know if you have a, a, a complex torus with a, with your lattice yes so c divided by lambda then obviously you want this torus to be algebraic so what are the condition on lambda uh, and and those co conditions are, co are called Riemann relations, and you can look at it. Obviously, uh, for many people, uh, they 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 then uh, you want to go into a construction uh, similar to what you know uh, from the elliptical, so so-called Ziegel space. So you define the Ziegel space, so the the matrices. That with, which are special. So uh, the symmetric matrices with the imaginary part positive definite. So like a straight generalization of a, a Ziegler upper half plane. And then you will know by construction that the resulting torus will be algebraic. So this is, uh, this is the first exercise. And uh, then the second exercise uh, is uh, for you to see because, okay, uh, we, we haven't seen the definition of a prim map on the lecture by, by Angela, but we already seen the, the definition of a prim map for double coverings uh, on the Irens uh, lecture. So the idea is that, uh, actually, I, okay. So the idea is that you have the Jacobian here. We have a covering from C to C prime or from C tilde to C. Uh, so you have a Jac Jacobian uh, in the middle, then you have the smaller Jacobian here, and then you have the kernel of this of this norm map, well known, and uh, there are two. So the definition, the one of the definitions of a prim map is just the connected component of the kernel, which will be one uh, definition. But the other definition, which you can think of, if is by uh, so-called complementary abelian uh, varieties. So if you have an abelian variety, uh, you can think, you know, it's it's just a torus. So you have CG divided by some lambda. So if you find a subvariety, abelian subvariety, so some smaller vector subspace, then there is a construction which show you, shows you that there exists a complementary subspace. Yes, so this is quite a quite a nice thing. Actually, this is technical to show, but there exists, and those two things will be called complementary abelian subvarieties. And actually, those two notions of a prim so one would be that it is just the the zero of the the connected component of the kernel and the the second one will be the complementary abelian subvariety to the image of the smaller jacobian in the bigger jacobian those two things coincide and and this this is exercise number two uh, the exercise number three is also very important the universal property of a jacobian i will write it down unless, uh, yeah, uh, in a second. And then exercise number four, this is again, the classical uh, statement of the prims. So if you have an etal double covering, uh, you don't, 
you know, when I said the connected component, this is really tr crucial because the kernel of the of a norm map uh, has two uh, irreducible components, and actually we can say what they are, and you have this to this description p0 and p1, so you have to to show it. And actually, uh, you can generalize this this statement uh, if you have a finite covering between smooth curves, then the pullback is not injective. And especially uh, this means also that the kernel uh, is not connected if and only if f factorizes via a cyclic at our covering f tilde, I guess, uh, of degree uh, at least two. So this is, this is also important because, you know, okay, so in general, for the branched, for example, coverings, you have no problem uh, uh, the Jacobian, the smaller Jacobian is embedded in the bigger Jacobian. And then you have the, the kernel, which is connected. And the, this is the prim variety, as Iren uh, said. But if you have, uh, but if you have a, uh, uh, if you have a covering, which is not necessarily uh, branched or uh, or it is like a composition of two other coverings, then you have to be careful. Uh, uh, if you have a cyclic at all coverings downstairs, then you don't have injectivity. Okay, six is one, uh, the six example, six CRM is also very, uh, very uh, classical. So using Riemann singularity theorem, uh, you, you, you need to show that the singular locus of the uh, theta divisors, so the theta divisors on the principally polarized abelian varieties is defined, is well defined up to this translation. So the singular locus is also you know, defined up to translation and you can compute the dimension is G minus three for non hyperliptic curve. And uh, seven, uh, let's say seven is, uh, is important uh, because this is, this is also what uh, Irene was talking about also. Yes, so we, uh, in general, the prim, the prim map, the prim variety, the prim map is generic, generically injective. But uh, if we are in the locus of hyperliptic curves, we don't have injectivity at all. And uh, this is somehow the, the exercise seven uh, says uh, this. So if you have a, a covering of a hyperliptic curves, that the prim map is a Jacobian of another hyperliptic curve. So you really, you know, you can think of it that, 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 that the, the Picard group of the curve upstairs is built from the two Picard groups of smaller curves. And this is quite nice uh, statement because it, it gives you the ability to work with, uh, with those smaller pieces somehow. And uh, yeah, and, the, and the, the question is how to find this, this curve and in general, and then if you find the curve, then you will see that the Jacobian of a hyperliptic curve is a prim variety for some covering, and there will be lots of coverings that will give you this uh, uh, the, the the same hyperliptic curve. So you will have not injectivity. Exercise, exercise number eight. This is what I uh, what I've said that I don't know the answer to. So the first part is is in some sense easy. Uh, it's already. Maybe you can think. Maybe you can find it. Yeah, also in the Iran stock. So you have. Uh, so why the prim varieties are also also interesting because uh, by the universal uh, universal uh, property of a Jacobian, uh, the curve is uh, usually embedded also in the prim. So you have the, this Abel prim map. So really thinking about the prim maps. Uh, it's also a uh, similar question. So the, the prim theory is also similar question to, especially in, in the very low dimension, namely for the surfaces, is the, sa is the same about asking uh, what are the uh, embeddings of curves into abelian surfaces. So what kind of uh, curves can you find in the abelian surfaces? Maybe not, not necessary embeddings, but the birational maps, yes? So uh, if you have a genus free curve, you can embed it in abelian surfaces in abelian surface if and only if it is a covering of an elliptic curve so this is a statement uh, by uh, if the genus is two is already by barf uh, no if the genus sorry if the degree is two it's already by barf and uh, okay so we are, there are some 
curves, genius free curves that can be embedded in the abelian surfaces and others are not, they cannot be embedded. So we know that the genius free curve, a general genius free curve is a quartic plane. Okay, so you have, a, you know, you start with your favorite uh, quartic plane and the question is, uh, can you embed it into an abelian surface? So obviously, because we are in the 2021, the question is, if you start with your favorite quartic plane curve, uh, can you tell me if it is a covering of an elliptic curve 2021 to one? Because there is like three dimensional family of such curves in your, uh, in the, in the moduli of quartic curves. And the question is, can you, can you actually, you know, find the explicit example, somehow explicit example of those. So, you know, this is something like finding uh, not, uh, not rational numbers, yes. So, because obviously the covering for, you know, if, if this number was not 2021, but two, then it will be like easy because then you will have automorphism and so on. But for 2021, actually, if you don't like 2021, you can have anything which is bigger than what, the, let's say 10, it's, it will be already similar problem from my point of view. But it's quite an interesting question because on the level of abelian surfaces, the question is easy, yes? Can you find a curve that can be embedded into one 2021 polarized surface? So this is like an obvious question, but on the other hand, on the level of MG, I don't know the answer, how to say it. Yes, and then the, nine, the ninth question is also like, uh, playing with those uh, with those prims. So in general, the classical prim is the two to one unbranched, so et al, and then two to one branched, but then you can work with any degree in some sense. And obviously, as Irene said, uh, then you will almost immediately go out from, from the principally polarized world to, to the whole world of abelian varieties. So the question is when uh, when uh, the prim variety is still principally polarized. And there is a theorem in the birke lange which has a gap. So that's why it's interesting to, to do it because you, you will go to birke lange you will read the proof. And if you believe it, you are wrong. Yeah, there is a gap in, this, in the proof. And there is one more case which is not uh, covered by the birke lange but actually it is uh, filled by the paper of Lange Ortega, which you probably know. Yes, so that's the, that's the exercises. So I would like you uh, within like next two, uh, next two exercise sessions, I would like uh, to find uh, people who want to, who will be able to say a few words, more or less, uh, hopefully, the precise words how to solve these exercises so that you, you see uh, the constructions and you see the methods how to uh, play with, uh, with a prim. Because Angela wants to go with a, uh, with a theory and play with, uh, play with uh, prim maps and and uh, the geometry of the prim maps. But then I, you know, those, those exercises are like down to earth precise, explicit examples so that hopefully uh, most, uh, some of you who, who don't know much about print varieties will be able to, to do something or at least find, uh, find, a, uh, uh, find, some, find some references for it. Okay, so uh, that's more or less about the, the, the exercises. Uh, can I ask a question? Obviously, yes. Uh, so in, uh, in the exercise uh, eight, uh, you said that uh, basically we, it's hard to find explicit examples, but we know that there is a three-dimensional family. Could yes. you comment on why? So I imagine this does not depend on the 2021. This will be true not. for no, anything. No, no, no. So, okay. So uh, give me a second. Uh, let's go back to the, my... Uh, to uh, my tablet. So no, so 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 the, the the answer is very very easy. Yes. So okay. Yeah, okay. So let's maybe let's. So the answer is very easy because you can you know you, you can see it from the the other perspective. You start with your elliptic curve. Okay. You take four points. You choose your degree. 
and then uh, uh, you know that there exists a covering C E with a, a branched uh, D branched at uh, for, at sorry four points. Obviously, this uh, this uh, uh, this covering will be non-Galois. Yes, but it exists. So this curve by Riemann Kurvitz will be genus free curve, which has such an embedding, yes. And now if you think about the norm map, you will see JC, this will go to E, okay. And then you will have the prim of C divided by E, yes, so yes. And then uh, because, uh, because this is branched at four points and, uh, and 2021 is, I don't know, it's not prime. I don't know. Who knows? 2021. It's prime? not prime. It's a pro This is the first thing I checked. It's a product <laughs> of two prime okay. factors. Okay. So but, an <laughs> but anyway, E is isomorphic to E. So uh, it's non galois uh, you, you can assume it's irresistible. So it, it, doesn't, uh, uh, it doesn't go via. Because, OK, yeah, no, it doesn't go via any other. So you have like that. And then uh, you have here. P of C E dual, and now you can compute. Uh, so this is uh, the restricted polarization is 2021 uh, because it's 2021. So you have here one one. So here you have one 2021. Yes, polarized surface. So so uh, because uh, yeah because you have here a covering. So here uh, C, which is which can be embedded in the Jacobian. Uh, will wait a second. Am I sure that it will be an embedding or no? It obviously it will, it will not be an embedding. Sorry, 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 sorry. This will be just a birational map, yes, because this will be my rational map to so let's call it whatever uh, alpha uh, alpha of C. Because the uh, it will live in the one two thousand twenty one polarization, so the uh, the genus, the arithmetic genus will be two thousand twenty two, but the geometric genus will be free. So this will have lots of singularities, but the normalization will be C. So you have three dimensional family of those. Yes, that's. Uh, can, can you say why three dimensional? Because you have uh, four points of an elliptic curve, yes. which has three moduli, and then you have one moduli for the elliptic curve. Wait a second. No, so we will. No, it will be four dimensional. Wait a second. No, no, it might be that I didn't do the deformation theory calculation. It's just that the, the way you write it, it looks like four moduli. Uh, and then uh, maybe there is a reason why one of them doesn't happen. No, 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 no. It will be, yeah, it will be four. It will be four. I don't, three times. Yeah, obviously it will be four. Obviously it will be four. Uh, because yeah, we are in the genus free case. So any, uh, okay. So there is one more, uh, one more construction. We can go with like that. Okay. So uh, we start with any abelian variety in A3, yes, we can, uh, we can assume, so uh, uh, construct A that will be something like E cross uh, uh, X. So this is just one, this is like a surface. Yes, so this is like E 2000, not cross, sorry, not cross. I want this to be this plus. So uh, E that will be isogenous to the product X to uh, one, 2021. So you have a moduli which is one plus three. I thought of three. I thought about the surfaces moduli, but obviously you have any e and any x. So this is four. And then by by construction, you know that a is in general the Jacobian of, of something. Yes. And because it contains e uh, with the restricted polarization, you have this map. So again, yeah, obviously four. Four four is the the correct number. I forgot about this one. So even better, you know, you have six dimensional uh, family of uh, quartic curves and it's just to find something of co-dimension two, yes? 
And actually, there are infinitely many of those. So uh, you know, uh, it is dense uh, somehow in the in the Zariski topology, whatever. So you should be able very easily to find something. And it's really uh, unless this number two thousand twenty one is small, we don't. I, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. Yeah. So that's the that's the thing okay but we we, we really went uh, for the uh, you know for the boundary of the of the questions of what we know so let's go back maybe so that yeah are there uh, any any questions uh, for the first lecture of uh, angela i know uh, yeah there was one question in the in the lecture so i tried to answer with the splitting somehow so yeah the and there was another question which I haven't heard because I was then it was in the break I was away, so maybe there are some other questions. Sorry, I have a question. Okay. And um, how how can we see that uh, that that covering uh, the covering you you wrote before it, it exists? This covering, uh, this it's covering. easy. It's easy fact or. Uh, this is the Riemann's existence theorem in some sense. This is like, oh, okay. okay. This is the topological thing. Yes, you, you take four points, you take the, uh, you take the, you find the group in S 2021, which is uh, transitive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and topologically you can construct it. So it's, uh, if you want the reference, I think the Miranda. Uh, maybe a good uh, no sorry Miranda goes uh, with uh, uh, with the with the P1s but I think it's mm -hmm. yeah Miranda use uh, use use the P1 yeah yeah but still maybe yeah but uh, I think somehow yeah. Maybe I have to remove four points. Okay. okay. Fundamental so, group. Massimiliano. Okay. So the, the, the thing is that, okay, maybe, you know, if it does not exist, you can go to, to this second construction, which I prefer. Yes. You start with any, with, with your Jacob, uh, you know, with any Abelian free fold. Wait a second. What I, what I wrote here, I, a free, yeah. Any Abelian free fold that will be a Jacobian. And then, you know, for, for a free folds, there exist those guys that are isogenous to such things. And this is four dimensions. So those, because this is four and this is four, it has to exist somehow. Uh, at least, you know, finitely many of those should exist. But I think it's just the Riemann's existence theorem with some, you know, okay. possible changes, but I don't, yeah. Thank you. Thank you but it was, a, yeah, it was a good question. So I think, the, yeah, I, I assume that Riemann's existence would be like enough. Okay, thank you. Okay, any more questions? Yes, I have a question. Okay. Because okay. uh, Angela said that when we define Jacobian, the map from H1XZ to H1XOX, which is by serduality the same as H1X omega X dual, right? It's, she said it's injective, but well, this map isn't used by long exact sequence, right? From from exponential sequence, and it's I I believe it's not injective in general. So it's true that you may embed. I mean, this homology is a lattice, but it's embedded as a full lattice in H one x omega x, which is C two C G, right? Mm -hmm. But this map, I believe, it's not injective. For instance, I mean, you may have two classes which are hom I mean, homotopic, and mm, wait a second. Uh, you are in the you are in the cohomology, and uh, okay, you want wait a second, wait a second. I will just look at the what do we have. Mm. Because what, what you're what you're asking in some sense, if I understand correctly, is that the you know the construction of a of, of a Jacobian, yes, 
uh, that the Jacobian is the yes is the but, H1 uh, is the H1 of X Z. Uh, I think that what Angela said is uh, is the, that the statement was correct, uh, and it is the Abel Jacobi theorem. Uh, but I'm not. Wait a second. I just want to to look at it. Uh, where is the? Okay, I will just go with. Uh, okay, so uh, let me let me again share the now. Uh, oh, this one. Okay, so unless I'm wrong. Uh, the, the Angela wanted to tell you this lemma 1.11, 11.1.1, okay? So that uh, H1 is injective. Or I'm wrong. And if you want, there is yeah, a... well, okay. Now it looks believable. Abel, can you can you just make it a little bigger so we can uh, see? I would like to. Oh, ah, okay. Now I now I will be able. So yeah, there is. Thank you. Yeah, because you know I have the the zoom uh, your your pictures and it's it was yeah. okay. Yeah, so uh, it seems that yeah, it's. Uh, you know this this part uh, is injective and it's you know it follows from the instances construction of a of a Jacobian. Yeah. So okay. So uh, you know from my point of view again. Uh, the somehow the motivation of Jaco of thinking about Jacobians was to compute those integrals, yes. So the the analytic uh, theory, but uh, the Abel Jacobi theorem says that we are uh, we are in the algebraic setting, namely the uh, that the Jacobian is already is also you can think about it as a, a divisors modulo uh, equivalence, yes. So this is. Uh, uh, this is very nice. So, but this actually again uh, gives you the question: If you start with an abelian variety, uh, can you tell me if it is Jacobian or not? And this is the Schottky problem, and it is un still unsolved uh, for the general dimension. So it's it's really uh, it's really hard question again, as I told you, because this is like you know analytic versus algebraic world. Okay, so maybe I can say if now a few. Oh, if actually if, if we are here, I can uh, I can find the uh, universal property of a Jacobian because we are already in the correct uh, in the correct uh, in the correct chapter of uh, Birka Hakalange. For example, obviously, uh, Birkin Hakelange is not the, 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 oh no, this was, I think it was earlier already. No, it's not. Yeah, so you can, you know, you can find a lot of things. And obviously there are other uh, books that are uh, on Jacobians and curves. So, so the universal property of a Jacobian, uh, now you, you see the, the, uh, the statement, so what's the statement is that if you have a, a, that that the Jacobian is uh, has universal property, namely if you have any other uh, uh, by rational rash, rational map from uh, the curve to any other abelian uh, uh, variety, then there is a and induced uh, morphisms of abelian varieties up to translation because everything you have to uh, in uh, for 
for abelian uh, varieties you uh, either you think everything up to translations or you fix a point and you take you know you take you put zero to zero and again by some lemma this is more or less the same uh, the same informations either you, you you have a homomorphism of abelian groups or uh, or you have a, any morphism and then by translations you get a homomorphism yeah so the universal property of a jacobian why it's important because again this is uh, you can think about the Jacobian or actually uh, about the uh, dual to the Jacobian as an Albanese. Yes, so the, the solution to the Albanese problem uh, uh, as a abelianization of a, of a curve somehow. Uh, so yeah, so that's the universal property of a Jacobian. Uh, is there anyone who wants to say a, a few words how to how to see this uh, how to see the proof or maybe I will go okay because today it's uh, is the first time and probably you haven't seen exercises so okay so today I will just talk but starting from tomorrow I hope that uh, I will find some people who wants to share some solutions to to the exercises okay so please. Uh, I really encourage you to say a few words uh, about your favorite exercise from the this nine, and that that would be that would be nice. Okay, so in terms of a universal property, what's the what's the what's the proof? The proof is more or less uh, we take the Abel uh, the Abel uh, map from c to j okay so the j is the peak zero uh, and uh, so we have to fix a point c and then uh, we have a map uh, from c to j which is just uh, taking x to x minus c yes and this is a the, the peak zero so uh, what's the uh, how to uh, so if you have a map phi then the map uh, phi twiddle it's like it can be defined in the only like th th there is an only uh, way to do it namely you just take the the whole points here uh, p1 up to uh, any point in the jacobian can be written as the sum of pg points minus g is the g remember g is the genus and then the dimension minus the g times c uh, but c goes to zero so you, you just you don't see it so the, the this map is just phi of pi one phi of p one plus 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 phi of p g minus g uh, phi of c. Again, if you assume that uh, c goes to zero here, you don't have any uh, you don't have this part. So you have something like that already. Yeah. So this is like the unique uh, way to write it down. And the only question is if uh, if this is if this is uh, if this works if this is correct. And the idea is that firstly, by rigidity theorem, uh, if you have a map from C to X, uh, which is rational, then it is everywhere defined. This is a, a, this is a special property of, a, of an abelian varieties. Uh, so you have actually not a, by a rational map, but by, but by a morph, you have a morphism. And then again, uh, phi, star, uh, phi twiddle in general, would be a, a rational map and actually birational because uh, those guys are of the uh, same dimension. Uh, but uh, but this is also a morphism. Yeah. So uh, c c to the g and x are by uh, are are. are uh, uh, this is a morphism, and here we have a birational maps. And then, so therefore, you can find this mo this morphism T, and the diagram commutes by the definition of this of this map. Uh, now, phi will be a homomorphism because it takes zero to zero, and uh, and on, you only need to check that uh, that if you change C to some C prime. Uh, the map will be st will still be the same, yes. And this is and this is like a computation. So it's really uh, it's really the universal property is really not very hard to show. Uh, you need 
some uh, properties of abelian varieties and you need to to know that the that c generates the jacobian and this is exactly because you have this abel map and uh, i think you will see even in the angela's uh, lecture that the theta divisor can be seen as the image of the uh, wg minus one the this is also the Riemann singularity theorem and uh, so the universal property of Jacobian is says that uh, what you think is correct is actually correct. So that's the that's the idea of the universal property of Jacobian. But it it is very helpful because uh, you know if you have a now if you have a covering of uh, of two maps you have this norm map in some sense by the universal property of Jacobian. So that's the uh, this is how. Uh, you solve. You can solve the the exercise number. What's the number? Number uh, three. Yes. So the universal property of Jacobian. So obviously, if you haven't seen the proof before, uh, there is some details to be checked from the abelian uh, abelian varieties theory, but. But if you if you know the the technical details, then the then the idea of the statement is is not very hard to, to see and to follow. Okay. Uh, okay. So maybe I can just now stop sharing. Yeah. And okay. Are there any more questions, or maybe someone wants to say something about the uh, exercises? Okay, so if not, maybe I will say like a few more generalities about the Jacobians. And abelian varieties in general for those who, who who don't know much about the story so that you you see a bit more okay so as you as we said already abelian variety uh, is c g to divided by some lambda yes so uh, in general in a very general uh, uh, this torus is not projective so we assume it is projective yes so projective So in general, uh, in general, the narrow severity uh, group of A is just Z. So you have up to a uh, constant, uh, you have just one polarization. So you, you are really rigid, yes? So uh, uh, there is this, uh, so you have this line model L and what, what you can do, you can just take the, the cave tensor product of this line model L and obviously you can translate it by points in uh, uh, in the uh, in the abelian uh, in the abelian variety. So uh, yes, so this is this is one thing uh, which you should you should somehow know. So uh, moreover, the endomorphism in general, endomorphism of A is again just only Z. So you can what you can do. Uh, you can on, only if you have a point x, yes, you can multiply its scope, let's say n. You can take x in A and you can just multiply it uh, to n x in A. Yeah, so in general, the endomorphism is also trivial somehow. So there is, uh, and obviously there is this, uh, this crucial automorphism, namely minus one. Yes, you take x to minus x, the, the involution, the, the minus one. Okay, and uh, in general, A is simple, i.e. Uh, does not contain uh, abelian subvarieties.
uh, abelian subvarieties apart from the trivial one, namely zero and uh, the whole thing. Yes. And this is obviously uh, this part obviously is over complex numbers. Yes, because as a, if you think about is a real uh, torus, then it's you can always take it as S1 to the G and everything. Everything is not true. So we are really over complex numbers. Yes, here. Uh, yes. So uh, and similar thing, uh, similar thing uh, is for Jacobian. So yes, for general Jacobian. So OK, so in general, uh, general, so the dimension of uh, AG is uh, G choose two or G plus one choose two. Uh, so it, it grows quite a lot. Uh, for general Jacobian, the similar things happens. Yes, for general Jacobian, uh, similar. So the G general Jacobian, so the general Jacobian name is Jacobian of a general curve is again simple. Uh, it doesn't have uh, any endomorphisms and the neural severity is, is also that. So uh, if you have a covering, is far from being being general, yes? Because as we said, if you have a covering, then this curve is far from being general, uh, especially uh, your Jacobian contains a subvariety, the smaller, the image of a smaller Jacobian, usually the Jacobian. also bigger so uh, we are really you know we're setting uh, our story so that we can work yeah and that's the then the, that's the idea yes so uh, then the jacobian jc tilde as we said is the jacobian of jc actually okay so let's call this map f oh yeah it's f already As I said, some abelian subvariety, and we will call it the prim. Yes, yeah? so this is just the prim. And obviously, we are interested in uh, uh, it. What what can be this prim? Yes. So as we said, for double coverings, the prim is of uh, dimension g minus one, which helps. We'll see the the results of the Nagis for uh, for uh, A5 from for A5. Yes. So yes. So then and then there is the prim map, which I guess which I guess uh, will be defined again in uh, in Angela's paper. So if you have a covering, which will be in R, G, and then again, usually you define, you have some degrees and you have some uh, branching because you can do it for any any degree and any branching. And then you define this P of C tilde over C, which will live in some abelian varieties of some dimension and some, so here you have dimension and here you have polarization. Yes, in general, the, the, for genus two, for degree two, it will be like G minus one and the principal polarization, but in general, it can be anything more or less. Yes. And when the prim map is injective is a good question. When, uh, or generally, generically injective, it is very important that to see that classically it's generically injective, but never injective. And as far as I know, actually, we don't know the locus of uh, non-injectivity. Uh, so uh, we know that the tetragonal construction gives you the locus that where it is not injective, but we don't know if this is all or what are the other uh, examples. So there are some still questions and some research going on well, where, when it's not injective, even for the classical case. But for non-classical cases, uh, we know, for example, injectivity as, as uh, already was mentioned in the Irens talk. Okay, maybe that's all for for today, I guess I should finish uh, now. So again, I'm here for, for all uh, workshop. If you have any questions, 
please do not hesitate to to ask and hopefully tomorrow we will go and try to work out uh, some uh, some solutions to some of those exercises and maybe we will have some more exercises uh, depending on what happens in the lecture okay thank you very much last minute questions Uh, if not, then uh, maybe we have now our lunch break. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, remember that the gather is always open when